Recording is on. Okay, so welcome back everybody. This is part three of our JavaScript module. Actually, if you're seeing this from YouTube, you will notice that there is no chat and something appears as to be wrong. With this lesson, well, unfortunately, we already recorded this lesson. We had some technical troubles, so I'm re-recording this without the students. Um, this is more of, you know, of course, also one more signal to tell you, be present for the lesson. I'm, I excuse myself and I'm super sorry if we had this problem. So now let's start because today or tonight, we are going to learn about functions in JavaScript. Uh, we're going to learn about arrays and objects. So as since many of you asked me this thing and I'm going to show you that to you again, let me share my screen. Okay, so like how I, manage my environment, of course, I remember you that you have to go in your folder where you have your index HTML file, your script, and you can use the one from lesson one on the GitHub link that I always link to you for the lessons. And I just drag and drop them in Visual Studio Code, click on index.html to see the page, and then I just, you know, start coding. Let me hide this. So, you know, let me also reopen the webcam. There you go. There you go. So, you know, when I write my code and when I explain that to you, I like to explain code and paradigms and solutions inside of, a job, of the JavaScript language by the problems that they are trying to solve. And in the last lesson, we talked about repetition. So now let's see how we can solve the problem of repeating code of garbage code because you know a code that is being repeated is code that will be harder to maintain more prone to error and of course i'm not referring to loops because that's repeating code intentionally let me show you for example what i mean let's suppose that i have something like first name prompt what is your name and then i print console.log, your name is first name. Sounds pretty basic, yeah? Let's do that again with another variable. And let's run this program. Let me go here. What's your name? My name is Piero. What's your name? Let's say it's a new. And you can see that data gets printed. Now, can you spot the problem with this code already? It's very basic, it's, you know, as an example purpose, but can you see that we are repeating the code for printing data, for printing the name? What happens if I had a program that does this 10 times? You know, so imagine something that goes on and on like this, and even on and on. If I ask you to modify this string and say, your first name is you would have to go here and modify the string for every occurrence. And what if you get something wrong and you forget and you misspell that or your fist? That's not a, a good solution. This is a repeating solution. Let's isolate this code into something called functions. And functions are such an important part of basically every programming language. A function is just a name set of expressions. Let's see how you write one. You use the keyword function, so that's pretty basic. You get, give a name, just like you give it to a variable, you give a name to a function. So this will be print name. And here I'm following the same uh, rules that I follow for variable names. Check out lesson number one if you lost them or if you don't remember them. This syntax, and then a block, which is kind of similar to the if block, you know, even if these two things are absolutely not related. And then let's say console.log, your name is Piero. So what's happening here? I have a block of instruction, a set of instructions. I gave a name to it. And basically I enclosed this into the body of the function. So basically this is our first function. And you know, this name, why do we need that? Because sim that's similar to variables. So when you want to use a variable like first name, you use that by referring to the name. 
And that's the same for functions. You use the function name, refer to that, but instead, like the difference with variables is that you have to add this special syntax to mean invoke this block, this set of instructions and run it. So when the engine of JavaScript, and you will see what that is in a later lesson, encounters this instruction, this code runs. I could also add something more here. So like, and so that is a beautiful name. This will run. So let's see that in action. I'm gonna remove this or maybe better. I'm gonna comment that out. Refresh my code. Your name is Piero. Again, the code, the engine comes here. This is ignored. And uh, when I mean ignore, I mean that it's not just, this code just doesn't run just because of that. You know, you have to run it by calling or invoking the function. So the code comes, the engine comes here. It encounters on line five, print name, it's invocation, and this code is being run. But again, you can see how much this function is already boring because it's not very useful to have a, a function writing on the console, your name is Piero, unless you're writing, I don't know, some kind of program where that is needed and you just want to print my name. So how do we solve this? How do we make functions really worth to be used? Well, we can parameterize them, meaning we can give them some variables to use. So in lesson number one, we introduce variable inside of our programs to make them more dynamic. And we can also introduce them inside of functions. Let's write another function. Function print name, which is the same as we were writing before. And now let's give it this little variable here, console.log. Your name is name. So what's happening here? Basically, we are giving this variable, this function, pardon, a variable. And this variable can be used inside of the function. But how do we give this function, this variable? Sim we simply pass it. So we have print name. And inside of this uh, parenthesis, you see we are mimicking the structure, we give it a value or you know a variable, anything that produces an expression really. So for example, I'm gonna give it now Piero. Let's do that again. Your name is Piero. What happens if I use this one more time with the name Sunil? Your name is Sunil. So amazing, we were able to, you see, parameterize this function by simply saying, hey, you need to use this variable, I'm gonna give it to you when I invoke you. And here is, this is how you're going to use that. So amazing with, and remember that uh, functions can take more than one variable or arguments. So for example, you can say age, let's mimic the structure. We give it a number. We say my age is 22. And this will say, and your age is 22, uh, sorry. Age, let's do that, amazing. So this is how you make your code not repeating. And this is really one of the most important concepts in every language because you will be writing functions literally every day when working because you need to extract some logic to be able to reuse it. So what are the advantages now? We can reuse this logic, so we will modify it only one place when needed. So if I want to say your first name, now every occurrence of print name will see this modification. And so it's easier to maintain and less error prone. And of course, it's also more semantic because you're giving a name to a set of instruction instead of just putting them you know, in your code. So two more things that I wanted to show you about function is that you can define them in two more ways. And one of them is to by simply assigning a function without a name to a variable. And this is called function expression. Do you know why? Well, because the function is being used as an expression. So let's say that I have my function sum equal to function, so my variable, sorry, equal to function number one, number two. 
open uh, curly braces and we say console.log the sum is number one plus number two. So here we're basically assigning this function expression. We're creating a function expression and we're signing, are signing the, bar, the value to sum. So now when we want to invoke this function, we simply can say, sorry, we, can, we simply can say sum. And let's give it two parameters, 10 plus 10. The sum is 20. Amazing. Let's make this function of sum more dynamic. And why? Because I want to show you another important concept about function is that they don't necessarily just take our uh, variables in, but they can also throw values out. And that's, me. that's basically the return value of a function. So for example, instead of printing log, uh, a log of the sum of these two numbers in our program, maybe we want to simply say, okay, just don't care some function about how I want to use this sum. Maybe I want to use it in another function or I want to use it in an alert. Don't, I don't want you to console log, just give me back the sum and I will you know, decide what to do with it. You can do it with returning values. And the keyword for that is very easy, simply return. And then here you return an expression, which in our case is number one plus number two. And now since this value is actually being returned, if we just write this function like this, it will still work, but you won't really see anything because we're not using the return value. It's just like, hey, I'm giving you something back, but how are you using it? Well, you can just store that in variable. And then now we can decide to use it in a console log. Your sum is my sum. Find it 20. Again, again, amazing. One last thing about functions, you can make this syntax even shorter with the Enigma script uh, feature that was introduced so a while ago. And this feature is called um, row functions. And row function basically doesn't make any modification to a normal function except for this keyword, which you will see in the future. And basically, the difference is that in how you write that. So instead of writing function, okay, you write an arrow function as a function expression, you know, but you take this keyword out, you just leave parentheses, and here before the block, you enter this fat arrow sign, that's how it's called, and you have return. So now I can say console.log, I can invoke some directly from here because this returns a value and I can use it in my console log and I can say two and two. So the result will be four. Great. Um, again, with our function, they're very easy to use. They are very concise. You can even make them more concise than ever because remember that when you only have one parameter argument, you can just remove this um, parentheses or example, re let's rewrite, for example, the print name function and say name, you know, I don't need to do this here because it's only one argument, fat arrow. And when you only have one instruction composing the body of your function, you can simply do remove this block and the return keyword. So can you believe this is a function? Well, yes, it is. If you see this parentheses appearing, it's because my linter is doing that. So just don't worry. Print name and let's pass it in Piero. And of course, let's modify this body to do something meaningful with that name. And let's say your name is name. So yes, this is a function. That's right. Your name is Piero. Great. Okay, so. The second very important concept that I want to show you today is the one of arrays. When do arrays come handy? Well, suppose that you just want to store a collection of data. For example, let's suppose that you want to share to, um, sorry, store five different temperatures. Let's suppose like you're writing a weather station program. 
how do you store these temperatures? Well, a way for doing that will be to do something like this. So I'm writing my loop. Let's say, uh, let's say I want to store temperature from one to 10. Uh, oh, no, let's say, okay, so temperature equal prompt. What is the temperature? By doing this, we will actually be prompting the user 10 times for temperature. But you will learn better about scope in the future. But just for your information, this code is not going to work because this variable is going to be reassigned every iteration of the loop. So what are we supposed to do? Find a way to you know work with, let's say, let temperature one, temperature two. That's that's not a good solution. That's not the proper way to store this data. And that's where array is coming in, in hand. An array is simply a collection of data. And it's very similar in syntax to a variable. Let's see how you define that const temperatures. And now equal. And instead of passing a single value, you represent a collection of them by using square brackets. And let's add something like 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. Let's see, these are some Fahrenheit temperatures. Now, let's make this program even cooler. So let's do something with this array. And OK, so maybe first I want to show you something to do with this array. And that is, you know, you refer to an array just as you do with variables, so by using its name. But be careful because with a variable like first name and Piero, you just use first name to refer to this value and you're good to go. With arrays, that's not the case because if you use just the keyword temperatures, not the keyword, the variable name, the array name, sorry, you're going to print all this data. But what if I want to just print one of them? Well, the solution to do that is by saying temperatures. Mimic the structure, so inside of the collection, and then add a number. What is this number? So then, well, you got to understand that to access value instead of a, an array, you use the value index. What is the index? Well, simply, when you create this array, every single value has its own index. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. In this case, if we add another one, it will be 5, let's say 55, 55. So it, the index is basically just a incremental value for starting from the first item of the array till the last. And you will notice that the index starts at zero. So basically the last item of the array, if you have an array of sides, six will be at index five. So let us let me try to access values in my array now by saying console.log temperatures zero. See what happens? 50, amazing, we access our value. And so we can do that with five, And also two, which would be zero, one, two, fifty-two. Beautiful. I remember that you gotta be careful with arrays because what happens if you enter ten here and you don't have that index? Well, you will just get undefined, and this might be the uh, source of some problems in your programs. So be very careful. One of the most common operation which you can perform with arrays is to traverse them, meaning going through each item and perform some action on it. So for example, let's say I want to print every item of this array instead of doing temperatures zero instead of a console log, temperatures one. Let's traverse the array by saying, by using a for loop, and here you can see I'm accessing the length. So I'm saying iterate from zero, which is the starting index, till length, which will, will be the length of this array will be six. So zero, one, two, three, five, 
uh, four, five, uh, six. But you know we are using the minor operator, so we're never going to iterate through one more item in the array. We're just going to be safe iterating through zero through five. Let's do this. Now let's say console.log. How do we print the, uh, the current array item? We simply say temperatures and we access the current item in the loop. So basically when this is zero, we will print array at zero. When this becomes one at the end of the first iteration, this will be temperatures one and so on. See, and that's something great to do. So for example, now, Let's write a function since we're talking about temperatures and let's make this program even better to Celsius. And we're going to say that this is a cool arrow function, which takes a temperature and it returns. Let me get my formula, which I saved here for converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius, it's this one. Let me go back here. And there you go, temperature. So, sorry, didn't have to function there. So this is my arrow function here. Great, of course, remember that you could also have written that like to Celsius equal and let's say no, not equal but temperature and uh, body of the function. Let's just use arrow functions here. Why? Because they're more modern and cooler. And let's say that for each item here, we're going to say console.log temperature to Celsius is now more detail here. So temperatures current temperature to Celsius is, comma goes here, is now let's move my function here with the current. If I split that, you know, my, my code editor has done that for me. So for the current, uh, temperature, we print it, and then we pass that value to, to Celsius, which will convert that and return back to us a converted temperature. Let's do that. You see, 50 in Celsius is 10. 51 is 10.5555 periodic. Okay, so this was amazing. And now let's introduce to you the last um, concept of today. First, I remember that I wanted to show you also one more thing, and that is that when you have an array, you can't use that as variables, as I showed you, because you can't just refer to its name, or better, you can, but you won't access a single value that you might decide to extract from the value, from the array, and you can't even assign it normally, because you know you can't just do equal 10, because now, if I go to print temperatures, you will see that it holds 10. So this is not an array anymore. What if I just want to add a temperature at the end of this array? What if I want to add one more item? Well, array has some common functions to um, modify it. And one of them, and which is basically the most important, which I wanted to show to you is push. So you can say temperatures dot push six, and this is going to going to add at the end of temperatures the value push, meaning we will have one more item. Let's print it, and here is my full array, and that's again amazing. Let me introduce you to the last concept one more time of the of this lesson, which uh, which is an object. So the problem with object is that sometimes in your program, you want to specify key value pairs. And how do you do that? You don't do that with an array. You can just have you know a collection of data with array. So something like temperatures, as we saw, 
Lambda, you can also put string here or booleans. Really, uh, JavaScript dynamic typing is amazing. And what if I want to hold key value pairs? So, for example, let's say that I have north and north temperatures. So let's say I have these three temperatures coming from a weather station in north of Italy. And then I have these other three, three coming from the south of Italy. And that I want to print an average of northern Italy temperatures and south Italy temperatures. Well, an amazing way to store these values will be using an object because we would have the key value pair system. So we would have like North Italy average. And so this is the key and we have its value, which let's say it's 50. And the same goes for South Italy average, you know? So this is a very comparable way to, show, to store this kind of data using objects. How you define an object? Similarly to a variable, so let's say temperature Italy temperatures. But just like you use a special syntax for arrays, you use it for objects. So you use curly braces this time. And then here you enter your key value pairs. So for example, north temperatures, let's say it's zero. And you use a comma just like you use for arrays to separate key value pairs. We use that here to separate values. South temperatures, let's say zero again. And that's your first object. How do you access an object? Similarly to arrays, you can just print the object or better, you can, but look at what, do you, what you get. You get the object body being printed. What if you want to access a single value from it? A single key, sorry, I'm taking a sip of water. Well, the way to do that is instead of using a square bracket notation, or better, you can use it actually, I will show that to you later. You use a dot notation. So you say north temperatures. I corrected myself because really you can also use north temperatures to access this. You have you just have to enter that in um, in this um, and I remember how they're called in in these brackets. I don't remember how they're called in English. Sorry, it's it's so late. So let's use dot notation for now. North temperatures. Let's see that. And you can see we get zero. Why? Because when you invoke a key value pair inside of an object, you get the value and not the key, of course. So you're never going to get something like the string, not temperatures. Let's make good use of this object with the last example of this lesson. Uh, let's do it. So for example, let's say that I want to calculate the average, as I mentioned, of these arrays and then use them here. I'm going to use two loops. Let's traverse the array. And then I can say that I need to calculate that sum equal zero. Here I'm going to calculate the sum of each of these items. So 50 plus 51 plus 52. How do I do that? I simply add to sum the current north temperature like this. Then I copy this code, pasted it. Let's modify these variables because they, are, they have the same name and that's not allowed. So let's say north, north sum, south sum, copy this here, copy this here. So we have now in south in north sum the sum of these values in south temperatures in south sum we have the sum of these values. Yeah. Now let's use this object and say Italy temperatures, 
And the average in, in math, even if I'm not that good, is calculated by finding the sum of this of a set of values, and we have them, and divide that by the number of items which you summed. So in our case, it would be more temperatures, sorry, more sum divided by simply north temperatures dot length. And that will give us the number of items that we use for our sum. Remember that you can give an expression, any, anything that produces an expression as a value to your pair inside of an object. Let's do the same for salt sum divided by salt temperature dot length. Now we can say that average temperature in North Italy is Italy temperatures, not notation again, North temperatures. Let me save, uh, my code splits that automatically, my voice code. Let's copy paste that. So Italy, Italy temperatures dot south temperatures. So I'll print that. And these are the two averages. So it's really weird that we got this to be equal. I just, oh yeah, that's because I got this wrong. So this is south temperatures, sorry, pardon for that. But it's good that you saw this happening because Immediately rely, yes, now they're wrong, now they're correct. So this was actually very funny that happened because you just saw that when you're tired or when you're not truly focused or for whatever reason, you know, you're just human, you make error. That happens even to me after four years of writing code. So let's not just get discouraged by your code when or by yourself when you make errors. I just did, it, did one in front of you and I'm not ashamed of that. I just recognize it and fixed it. So thank you so much for participating in this lesson. I'm sorry that I had to re-record it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we do everything live in Stack Academic. So as always, thank you to whoever is supporting this initiative. If you're following this lesson from YouTube, don't forget to share your progress. Don't forget to share things about Stack Academic and you can contact me on my email. You can contact me, me or Sunil on the Discord chat and really just share the initiative because it helps us. So if we find more sponsors or if we find more people helping us, that will benefit you. So never forget to share your progress and tag us in general on Twitter. Let me stop the sharing. And so that, that was it from tonight in Milan. And uh, you just learn about functions, objects, and arrays in JavaScript. Good night, all. Let me stop the recording.